Welcome back to Christian Questions on News Talk 104.7 WXLM. Our subject this morning, what is the baptism of the Spirit? To be a part of our program, call 860-442-9956. That's 442-WXLM. And Jonathan, this morning, to get to the baptism of the Spirit, uh, we need to do a lot of groundwork to lay that, lay, lay out what baptism means, uh, which we talked about. And remember, when you're being baptized, just think about being in a pickle. <laughs> or becoming a pickle or something. It, it's something, it's, 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 it's a, a change. Right. And there's physically, literally, it means to be immersed, to be submerged. But the idea is that that submersion is a, is showing something of of great difference the, the of versus you know the before versus the after picture mm-hmm. okay next we were looking at mark chapter 1 verses 1 through 6 uh the introduction it says the beginning of the gospel of jesus christ you read that before the break talking about john the baptist and it says he did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of rement, uh, of repentance for the remission of sins mm-hmm. so now let's just look at his baptism was a baptism of repentance, which means, and it, and it explains it later. It says they were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Mm-hmm. So, what does the word repentance mean? Compunction for guilt, including reformation by implication, reversal of another's decision. So, compunction for guilt, including reformation. So, it's the idea of not just saying, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a sinner," but the the decision to change what has been. So you can see there's a change involved in the in the baptism of repentance. Now let's just look at a couple of scriptures um, that 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 use that repentance in relation to baptism. Matthew three verse eleven. I indeed baptize you with the water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then Acts thirteen verse twenty four. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Uh, all right, so you've got this baptism of repentance, and, and it's very, very clearly focusing the baptism of repentance toward John the Baptist. Now, in Hebrews 6.1, it, it takes the baptism of repentance and speaks of it in a slightly different way. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So the idea of repentance is just the first step. Now remember, repentance isn't just saying you're sorry, it's doing something about it, it's making a change. And that's what's pictured in this baptism of John. It's changing the way you're living and pay att- paying attention to those things that are important. Okay, So that's the first thing. That's the first thing that's important is there's this baptism of repentance by John. Secondly, now, we have the baptism for the remission of sins. Okay, and that, and that comes, and, and that is the baptism of Jesus. Now, let's take a look at, at that for a minute. First of all, what does the word remission mean? It means freedom, uh, figuratively, pardon. Okay, when you are pardoned for something, what happens? You know, when the president gives out a pardon, whatever the, the, uh, the, the infraction was that was in place, is is erased it's like a get out of jail free card exactly that's exactly what it is so pardon is is a big word okay because it it holds so much power so the remission for, for repentance is one thing okay repentance is i'm saying i'm sorry and i'm trying to i'm living better pa- it's, tr- it's getting your heart right right so that's what we do mm-hmm. the pardon comes from god so you see there's there's two different pieces John's baptism was not involved in the pardon. That's why Jesus came. Let's look at a few scriptures on this. Luke 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Okay, now in that, you didn't say pardon. No, I didn't. Okay, say so. So say, pardon me. You know, the word <laughs> deliverance and the word liberty are the same word. Pardon. So it's the same word for remission that was mentioned yes. in the previous scripture. Mm-hmm. So that word to preach deliverance to the captives, pardon to the captives, mm-hmm. and recovery of the sight of the blind to set at liberty pardon. to pardon them that are bruised. Mm-hmm. So, and that's Jesus is saying, this is what I came to do. 
So what John came to do was a was a foundation work for what Jesus came to do. And what Jesus came to do was built upon what John came to do. A couple more scriptures on this. Luke twenty four forty seven, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So there you have the two together saying, okay, repentance is important and the remission of sins is important. And that is largely what the gospel, the good news of Jesus is all about. Okay, it's good to repent, but it's even better to be pardoned. Okay, because repentance is great, but you have to have the, the reciprocation on the other end through Jesus. One more. Acts ten forty three, To give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So believing in Jesus, and, and you know, we're not going to get into uh, Never mind, I won't even start. <laughs> but it's an important thing, and I have to say it. Believing is not just sort of an intellectual acceptance. The word believe, when you study what it means, it means to really, truly be dedicated to that intellectual acceptance. It's a, it's a heart rendering of that intellectual acceptance. Um, and just one more scripture, then we'll go on to this baptism of the Spirit. All right, Colossians 1, 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Okay, and that, that word. word forgiveness is pardon. So it's important. So what we have so far, Jonathan, is baptism is the word literally means an immersion, a submersion. It means it had it implies something changes. And we have shown that there are in the New Testament two different baptisms that happened. The baptism of John the Baptist, who was sent to the Jewish nation to plow the road for Jesus. And the plowing of the road was in his preaching for their repentance because they were not living according to the privilege they had been given under the law. And so he was getting their hearts right so that when Jesus would come on the scene, they would be able to accept it because now they're – it's like it's like a paradigm shift. What John did is, is he created a paradigm shift in, in the hearts of the people so that when Jesus came, they could recognize it. That's, that was the way it was, it was all put together. So all of that being said, that's baptism in general. That's not the baptism of the Spirit. So everything we said – Good introduction, but it doesn't really apply to this baptism of the Spirit. So let's talk about this baptism of the Spirit. And again, it's first mentioned long before Jesus comes on the scene. So the context of the account that we're going to be looking at begins with Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 17. Now, because the Gospels often record different details of an experience, what we're going to do is we're going to read Matthew chapter 3, verse 7 First, because it adds a detail of this particular experience that's important, and that is it gives us specific people who are listening to John the Baptist that aren't mentioned in Luke. All right. Again, that's Matthew 3, 7, and then Luke 3, 7 through 17. 